Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com, and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, do men over 40 confuse you? Or is it this? <laughs> what to know? Uh, really quickly, uh, these videos are shot on my balcony uh, for you. This is very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the link below. This is a group where I answer personal questions uh, in a very inexpensive membership group. So check out the link below called Midlife Love Mastery. Okay, our topic. Do men over 40 confuse you? What to know? All right, you know, it's interesting. Um, recently, a, a woman was interviewing me for coaching. Uh, she was looking to hire a dating coach and she realized that she had talked to women coaches and just didn't feel like that was a right fit for her. And she was actually reaching out to many um, male coaches to get some perspective, which um, I totally appreciate. And then she said to me, well, the male coaches she's been speaking to, you know, they're married, they have children, you know, they've been down the road, they, you know, seem to have a happy, loving relationship with someone in their life. So why should I choose you? And she interviewed some great relationship coaches, even the British guy who I think is fantastic. Um, but why should she talk to me? And I said, well, I think those guys are great and I have great respect for them. Many of them are, are, are friends of mine or at least social acquaintances of mine. And I said, well, what makes you mean unique is a little, uh, what makes me unique is the following. First off, I got married in my 20s. So I have been in a fully committed relationship and I have children from this experience. So A, I've done marriage. Um, B, um, I went through divorce. I went through divorce. I went through family court. I went through alimony, child support, visitation rights, um, and the emotional effects of that. I was then in another significant relationship that while it didn't go the distance, I did experience a significant relationship in my 40s. What I also experienced was deep depression. What I also experienced was going to bed wishing I didn't wake up. What I experienced was doing drugs and alcohol to numb the pain in my life. I was literally self-medicating and I was numbing the pain. Uh, what else did I experience? Erectile dysfunction, elderly parents in, um, um, elderly parents in uh, assisted living and then losing my mom and dad, or not my, my dad, but my mom. Uh, what else did I experience? I've experienced, um, well, I've experienced the loss of a child. And, and I experienced the loss of a job. I lost my quarter million dollar a year job. And I share this with you because, um, because oh, by the way, my coffee mug says Hoffman and my t-shirt says Batman. Uh, if you like my t-shirt, please post a comment below. By the way, if you've ever experienced a man who's confused you, post a comment below and write a share, share with me your experience about a man over 40 who's confused you. And I, sh but I go back to saying I share all this with you because I've emotionally experienced things that didn't occur to me when, you know, when I got married in my 20s and had babies in my 30s kind of thing. I was living a happy, well, I thought I was living a happy life, but I really wasn't. I think a lot of people pretend that they have a happy life. Um, and I say that because why is the divorce rate 50 percent here in the United States anyway? But I've experienced the emotional traumas that so many men over 40 experience. And that's because when, our, when, the, when the blueprint of where we think our life is collides with our reality, that's called midlife crisis. And I've been through it. And, and look at, I lost a significant job. I lost my money in the market. And by the way, this is not uncommon. The vast majority of men are dealing with a lot of emotional issues. And so I know what that feels like. And, and again, no disrespect to my contemporaries. And I, I don't share this to impress anything on you. I'm just impressing that I understand the emotional effects. And it reminds me of the movie that William Hurt is a, there's a movie with William Hurt where he's a doctor and he's kind of an arrogant doctor. Uh, can't, I think he's a surgeon or whatnot. And he experienced cancer. He experienced cancer. 
And if, by the way, if you know the movie, please post a comment. Let me know what the movie is. I just don't remember what it is. And after experiencing cancer, he was humbled. He was humbled in his life. And I share this because I've been fully humbled. But what do you really, okay, so why am I telling all of this? Okay. And what's the bottom line? I'm going to get to that in a second. So I began doing healing. And interesting enough, I found a copy of one of the first books I read after my divorce that was put me on that trajectory. Um, certainly the movie The Secret was a big deal for me that helped me on my trajectory. But this book called Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life. Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life. And by the way, uh, I have a link below in books recommended by Jonathan, so you can check those out in the links, uh, books recommended by Jonathan, all my list of books. But this was like really a big, bam, wake up call. And if you notice, my personality is very much shut up, stop whining, and get a life. And, and, and you know, so, this was a wake-up call, and it began my trajectory of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. In fact, if you've ordered my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? <laughs> what the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? In the back, I put to, by the way, there's the back cover. I put together a list of all the material I went through to get to where I am today. I've done, I shared with you this cup, the Hoffman process, a deep dive into personal development and, um, and self-help and spiritual work. And, and again, books like one of my favorites, and I know I'm rattling off a lot of books, again, the links below, but The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, a big, this, was, this is like my Bible for healing inside. And so I share this with you because if you're confused about men, if you're confused about men, it's because most likely they've experienced major trauma or micro traumas in their life. And I want to say I've experienced a lot of micro traumas in my life. And the question you want to ask these men, this is the really key piece that you want to take away from this right now, is a recognition that mo and by the way, ask yourself, if you're listening to this, ask yourself, what kind of traumas have you been through? Because there's a difference, you know, for me, I'm sharing this with you because I've experienced it. This isn't something I intellectualize. This is something I fucking experience. And I'm still experiencing the, the ramifications of the micro traumas. And if you've experienced it, then we have to ask ourselves, then somebody else has too. So the reason why they're so confusing is because of this one reason. And that is, have they healed? from these micro traumas? Have they healed from these, these micro or major traumas in their life? And if they're seeking relationship and they haven't healed, then it could be problematic. And it's why male behavior can be so confusing. It can be why they ghost and pull away and disappear. Because those, and they are commitment phobic and emotionally unavailable. And it's not because they don't genuinely want relationship and connection with another human being, but their, their skill set, their ability to be emotionally available is really the challenge. This is why I've done a ton of work to get to where I'm at today. I share this from being, I've been there. I've been, look at, I was doing drugs and alcohol. I've, I've been down the real deep rabbit hole of depression. And, and as I shared with you, I lost a child. You know, people have experienced so much pain and loss in their life. And I am grateful I did the work in advance before Connor went away or moved, up, moved, moved to heaven. And a lot of people haven't done that work. And that's why they're confusing. Not because they're trying to be mean to you. Most men are good guys. They genuinely want connection. They're not doing this. They're not, their behavior, bad behavior, isn't because they're narcissist. It's because, as I shared in another video, they're myopic to their pain. And many of you are experiencing this thing as well. And if you can relate to this, please post a comment below. If this resonates with you, if you can say, I have had pain in my life and I can have compassion for another human being in that pain, and I'm not absolving them of their bad behavior. There's no absolving them. But I just want you to have understanding because this is the reason why most men are confusing. 
you like this video and you want to ask me personalized questions, you should check out my group, Midlife Love Mastery, so you can get, I shoot three videos a week just like this for my group on my balcony. Uh, and, um, and again, it's inexpensive to learn. Or if you, hey, if you're like that one person who eventually hired me, she hired me because of the my life experience, check out the free discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. And you'll be talking to me first, okay? Or I'm the only coach here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love because we all need self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a big bear hug of love. Is that if that's okay? I'm going to ask you to turn to somebody and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. I want to thank you so much and wishing you a fabulous day and please forgive the noise out there. Bye-bye now.